This is episode 547, and today we're going to be talking about learning to control your emotions. I think over the past year, we all could use a little refresher on our emotions and learning to control them, Uh, because some of us have a great control over our emotional responses, and some of us struggle. And depending on the situation, we all can be a little bit pushed to the edge, depending on the conversation and the situation. Um, But, you know, you think about it, doing or saying the wrong thing in the midst of an emotional meltdown could be very detrimental and have significant negative effects for you. I mean, like say something to your boss that doesn't like, could be out of a job, say something to your significant other, could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, say something to a friend, and you lose that friend forever. So we have to be very, very aware and You know, this learning to control your emotions is a subset of mental strength. Um, So, you know, gain what I hope to is share some um, tidbits here that you can gain control over your emotions with these strategies. Now, there is a great book out there, Emotional Intelligence, that goes into much, much more detail than I'm going to go into here. And what I'm trying to do here is just give you a, a little tidbit, some some walkaway action items that you can start to apply to your life right now. Um, so the first thing is realize that negative emotions simply don't last. I mean, if you're angry about something right now, you'll probably be over it next next year, next week, or even tomorrow. I mean, think back three weeks ago. I'm sure that there was something three weeks ago that got you upset. Can you remember what it is? Probably not, unless it was something really significant that turned into something massive and ugly. But remember, when you're in the midst of this negative emotion, it's not going to last. It's going to go away. And so perhaps not giving it as much energy and a much, as much attention as we do when we, when we have these negative emotions, we tend to, we, we project that this is the way we're going to feel in five minutes, in an hour, in a day, and it's just really not the case. And just realize that these negative emotions, it's kind of, if you can look at emotions as um, energetic colors, Uh, you look outside, there's green, red, blue, purple, it makes life interesting. Our emotions add texture to our life. And so when we feel an emotion, it's really not a bad thing, but if it's a negative, like anger, then we can feel it, but just know that it's part of that texture of living and maybe not respond to it and just enjoy that moment, if you will. Um, so that brings me to, uh, you know, examine your emotions. Learn to notice when you're getting emotional. And these emotions aren't just necessarily anger. It could be any of them. Just notice, because the more you notice your emotions, whether they're happy, joy, sad, anger, the more you're going to be able to be in tune with your body, the more you're going to be able to be um, in tune with yourself. And so notice yourself reacting strongly. Ask yourself why. Try to label that emotion. Now, again, this doesn't necessarily always mean a negative emotion. However, we would want to emphasize that. We want to identify that negative emotion. What what am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? Why am I feeling it? And when you can understand why, this is something that's pretty important. So let's just say you're getting frustrated and you get, and you lose your temper and you blast out at the person. Ask yourself, why are you getting frustrated? Most likely, it's not the person that's doing something. It's your interpretation of the event or the person that's doing something. And when you can interpret it differently, the emotion will change. So when you just have the emotion, it's really great to notice, okay, you know, I'm stuck in traffic. I'm getting a little bit irritated. Why am I getting irritated? Well, because... I'm late for my appointment. Okay, you're late for the appointment. What can you do now? Well, maybe make a phone call. Maybe do this. Maybe right and and work around those emotions. Um, One of the things there's an emotional wheel, a label, 
if you look up emotional wheel chart on the internet, you can find all these great words for different emotions. We limit ourselves to such a small description and what happens is the words we use just don't describe, they create. So if we go, we are we are loathing, we are we are super angry, we're going to act as if we are super angry. If we are rage, if we're in a rage, we're going to act like that. But if we go, yeah, you know what, I'm slightly irritated. That's going to bring our energy down. And so we need to be able to use words that correctly identify the emotion that we're feeling. And this emotional wheel is tremendous. It goes with, it has every emotion in there. And I would encourage to look for it, download it. And when you're feeling something, refer back to it and going, is this really angry or is this upset? Is this frustration? Is this irritation? And when you're able to label that emotion correctly, you'll be amazed at how the emotion diminishes and starts to subside when you use a gentler word with it. Create space. So many challenges created by our emotions can be eliminated if we just take a moment before reacting. Now, reacting is re-acting. So we're reacting out something that we've done over and over and over and over. And I know that when I was young, um, my mom would tell me to count to 10. And basically, that's the difference between reacting and responding is 10 seconds. And if we can take time to take a breath, to put some space in between the event and how we're going to respond, we often can, that 10 seconds will help us temper down the emotion, compose our thoughts, and be able to address the situation appropriately. Because what's interesting is when we get into a heightened state of arousal, let's just say really, really angry or frightened or any of those other ones, the the negative emotions, uh, we actually reduce the resources in our brain. So we don't, the blood doesn't flow to the whole part of the brain, brain it only flows to a few sections and it's mainly about survival. So when we're surviving, we're just going to say whatever we want. When we can calm down and give some space between the stimulus and our response, we're able to access more information, more data, if you will, from past experiences. And, oh, last time I said it this way, this is what happened. I better change it. So by creating that space, and sometimes it may have to be physical space. It may be that you're in a discussion with your boss and he says something that really pisses you off. And you go, you know, I just need to step outside for a second so I can compose myself and respond appropriately. But Hopefully the boss will appreciate that, but if not with a boss, a friend, or a significant other, just step away. Just step away because, again, we can have a visual, a visual trigger of the person, right? They, and it could fester our mood with that. So creating the physical space and the time space will help us identify that emotion, control it, and respond instead of reacting. Find a role model. Now, would you take, you know, stock tips from a homeless person? Probably not. But, you know, learning emotional control over somebody who's angry all the time might not be the best thing. But learning emotional control from those that maintain their composure, regardless of the circumstances, is a great asset. And this can be real or fictitious. Um, Blue Buds is a show I used to watch, and Reagan was the police commissioner on there. And he kept his cool, generally speaking, the majority of the time, regardless of the situation. Uh, Gibbs on NCIS is another one, right? They just, they're, they're strong. When they get irritated, they're strong, but they very rarely lose their cool. And so you could watch shows about that. You could look at real people who do that. Um, you could. Just look around at role models and see how they manage their emotions underneath critical times, because then we can learn from that. You know, that's modeling. We can mod model that. Another way is find a good coach. Coaches are not 
superhuman. However, we can reflect back to our clients um, emotions that we're hearing and asking where they're coming from and what does it mean so we can act as a, a great mirror in case you can't find a role model. But again, you can find great role models models out there that keep their cool underneath any condition. So find also find healthy ways to release negative emotions, right? Our actions can influence our moods. You know, if you're feeling bored while watching TV, there's no reason to continue watching TV, get up and go for a walk, do something. But what I love for myself is not necessarily negative emotions, but to pry myself for the day is exercise. Exercise is a great way to vent off those emotions. Now, the key is that we still have the emotion and we need to release it. And then when we release it, we can go back and investigate why we got so worked up about it. But we need these these valves like a pressure cooker. We need to be able to release this steam somehow through healthy ways not by fighting, not by drinking, not by you know, doing other things to release this energy, but going for a walk, talking to a friend, talking to a coach, um, working out, meditating. These are all great ways, healthy ways to release our negative emotions. And because we don't want to sit with them. We don't want to sit with it. And if it's a situation that has really caused you some angst, let the person know, hey, listen, I have to sit with this for a while. Can we finish this discussion tomorrow? And then you come back when you're cool, calm, collective, and begin the discussion as adults. But if you go into it right away uh, and you're at a heightened state of arousal, that could cause some really significant problems. So find some healthy ways. There's a lot of great healthy ways to release those negative emotions. Um, Try altering your breathing. This is something that is just amazing. You know, a lot of people assume that emotions are psychological but there is actually a physical component to it as well. There's this concept of box breathing, where you inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, and hold that for a count of four. And it's you know circular breathing or box breathing, whatever you want to call it. But when you focus on your breath, your breath dissipates emotions. Your breath can calm you down. Another one that I like is a 7-Eleven. You inhale for a count of seven and exhale for a count of 11. There's no hold. There's maybe a one second hold on either side of it. But as you exhale, you become more relaxed. You become calm. Your parasympathetic nervous system engages and you're able to be relaxed. So try breathing. Really work on. The key is to practice your breathing before you need to practice your breathing. So when you're feeling great, practice your breathing. When you're feeling wonderful, when you're outside driving, practice your breathing. Then when you need it, you'll have that tool readily available for you. So here's the bottom line. You know, if you're used to being controlled by your by your emotions, you know that it's not easy to maintain your composure. But you can choose to respond differently, right? Not react, but respond differently to your emotions and make wiser choices. This is your choice. Negative emotions exist to inform us that something may be amiss. They're not there to control us. So when we have these negative emotions, there's a a disconnect between what we believe and what's happening. There's maybe a meaning inferred that might be um, not in alignment with who we are. So these emotions, we don't want to neutralize them like being a Spock or a Vulcan. We want to be able to be aware of them, understand them, use them for questioning, and then move on and grow as a as a human being and, and as a professional. Um, if you'd like to see the show notes, please go over to warriormindcoach.com. You'll find notes about this podcast. You'll find blog posts and other things over there as well as a way to get a discovery call with you. And while you're on the internet, internet, please follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, under Warrior Mind Coach.